Good afternoon, everyone. This is another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Thursday, June the 20th, 2024. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone, and making any decisions regarding any system that develops, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the latest information for where you are. So the tropics continue to be active as of today, as we now have post-tropical cyclone Alberto that is moving over central Mexico. We have another area of disturbed weather that is beginning to take shape over the northwestern Caribbean, but we also have another area of disturbed weather that the National Hurricane Center has been closely monitoring over the last few days that will possibly likely impact northern Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. So the tropics remain pretty busy for the time of the year that we're in. So because Invest 92L is closest to land and it is the best defined system that we have right now going on, we're going to spend the majority of our video time on Invest 92L as it's now a threat to land areas. So this is a close-in zoomed-in view on Invest 92L for this afternoon that is lurking off the Bahama coast as well as the Florida coast in the southeastern U.S. And we can see that circulation here well apparent. We have a upper level low that I'll show you in more detail on water vapor in a little bit. But the background environment here looks pretty favorable for at least some further development with 92L as it continues to move off towards the west-northwest at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Here's a much better look at the GO-16 mesofloater satellite imagery showing you where and how 92L is uh, developing. So we have these low-level clouds that are doing this. They're kind of wrapping in in such a way that we have what appears to be a possible tropical depression. More on that in just a little bit. It is not a tropical depression, but very close to becoming one because our circulation is trying to get better defined here based on the satellite imagery with these low-level clouds. We got some pretty strong winds that are occurring just to the north of the circulation. So this is a more compact storm system. Now that we briefly talked about what the structure looks like on a visible satellite perspective from tropicaltidbits.com, we're looking at the water vapor imagery showing us where there's patches of dry air, patches of more moist air in the deep layers of the atmosphere. So we have Invest 92L that is right here. So it's in a fairly good moist pocket of air. Now, while there is a lot of shear here, there actually isn't. And the reason why is our disturbance is actually moving with this flow out of the easterly direction, which is imparting only about five to 10 knots of deep layer shear over the system. So quite frankly, 92L is in a fairly optimal position that could allow it to um, get well established with its vortex if it's able to do so. Now, because of um, the small size of 92L, there is this patch of drier air that is just to its south, and there are some indications that the shear could, in fact, pick up more out of the southerly direction in about a day or two, which could actually inhibit some development with the system. Because, yeah, if we get any shear out of the southerly direction, that's a shear vector. So if you can picture your system moving this way, you get more uh, southwesterly flow over the system because this low is moving faster or moving away from the system faster than the system could catch up to it. And so your shear vector will actually be more out of the due southerly direction in a couple of days. And that might force some of this pocket of dry air into the system and it might get ingested and not allow the system to uh, be able to get well established with its vortex and might struggle to get better organized. But for the time being, it looks pretty good right now in that moist pocket of air. Maybe some hints of dry air trying to get encroached onto the southern side, but I don't see much of that at the moment. Now, in general, 92L is going to be moving off towards the westerly direction, and the reason why that is is we have this cutoff flow. This is what we call a tut, a, trop, a tropical upper level tropospheric trough, we call it. This is what kind of happens this time of the year, how these troughs come from higher latitudes, they get pinched off from the jet stream, then they could actually retrograde and become their own little enemy for these systems. So in this case, we have that system there. We have a big upper level ridge to the north of the system. So this is over the eastern seaboard. You all are complaining about how hot it is up there with excessive heat warnings, heat advisories. And the system is in between these two futures, so it's actually going to be able to rush westward pretty quickly in such a way that most models, if not all of them, are tightly clustered that we think 
The system is going to make landfall somewhere in northern Florida or even southern or southeastern most Georgia. That's what we think that might happen today. Now, a quick sneak peek at the upper level conducive environment within 92L environment. I, oh, I said 95L. Oopsie. Uh, we can see that these green colors that you see on your screen indicate favorable conditions. So the shear is not very strong at all. And in fact, like I said, it's about five, maybe 10 knots at most. So pretty good environment here, despite the upper level winds that look strong. But we got to understand that wind shear is wind direction, speed or change with height. And it's not solely wind in itself. So easterly winds aloft. Easterly winds in the low levels make in part of only very little shear. Now, if we had westerly winds aloft and easterly winds at the surface that we do, that would be a very strong shear, enough to decouple this system entirely. We would probably not even be talking about this system in the first place if we had shear that strong. So in this case, the shear vectors are aligned in such a way where we don't have a whole lot of shear to contend with. Now, remember how I talked about how the system is not well defined yet? In this case, it really isn't. The recon mission that flew the system this afternoon was not able to locate a well-defined center. However, we are seeing a pretty good swath here of tropical storm force winds. Those green wind barbs on your screen indicate winds greater than 34 knots. So we are seeing tropical storm force winds occurring to the north of the system. There's even a couple of barbs here are that we're seeing winds of 40 knots, perhaps. So that would be uh, 50 about 45 to almost 50 miles an hour. That's pretty strong for a system that is not closed off yet. So even so, the southern side of this will pass over central Florida. You're not going to see a whole lot of wind. The northern side could see a lot of wind problems, maybe some coastal flooding and coastal impacts. Even so, this is not a declaration of a tropical depression a PTC or a tropical storm, it could become one in no time because of how well-defined the circulation somewhat is. You can see the flow doing this. We only need to get westerly winds that are strong enough here to close off a center for this to be declared a tropical depression or storm. And if it's able to close off a center, it will earn its name Tropical Storm Barrel, our second name storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. And believe it or not, it's possible we can get two, even three named storms by the end of June. And that's because while we are watching Invest 92L, we're going to have to keep an eye on another disturbance moving over the same area with where Alberto moved, which Alberto is barely hanging on to dear life on this map. So we may have an additional one or two named storms before June closes off. And we all thought that, man, we're in early June yet and we're not seeing any named storms. You were wrong because we might end up with a couple more before June officially ends. So now when we take a look at our latest European model, this is the ECMWF looking at the low levels as well as the mid levels and the upper levels of the atmosphere. So this is a three grade plot that I don't rarely show in my videos, but in this case I will, because this gives us an, uh, a look at what the environment is doing with 92L. So this is what it's going to look like. And we can see a fairly good vort max here. This is vorticity. This is how much spin there is in the atmosphere. So think of this in the atmosphere. The more spin you get, we can get a tropical depression or storm. This is what we look for. And when we look at the mid-levels of the atmosphere, this is the geopotential height at 500 millibars. This is at 18,000 feet. So thickness. this is basically thicknesses in the atmosphere. So you can think of a ridge as a big mountain of air. And you can think of an area of low pressure in the upper levels as a big trough or a valley uh, on the on land, right? So we have a valley, we have a ridge, and the system likes to find itself in between these two air masses. So with the ridge to the north that is steering the system like this, this is why we're getting a system moving in the general uh, westward direction. Because now while it's not at 500 millibars, see these wind barbs that kind of do this at 200 millibars? This is actually your upper level troposphere trough. That's why 
We call these tuts for a reason because they're not a well-defined surface low or mid-level low. These form in the upper levels when we have a pocket of cold air that is cut off from the overall flow from the west. And these retrograde and they could either constructively interfere with these systems or destructi destructively interfere with these systems. In this case, it is constructively interfering and we, again, despite that we do have what appears or could be a hostile environment, it's really not that hostile at all for 92L. And in fact, 92L could take somewhat of a full advantage at becoming a briefly named storm before it moves on shore. And then of course, uh, we got Alberto that is no longer on the map. So we can see where that Vort Max goes. It makes landfall Friday afternoon to Friday evening. And again, because this is a tropical disturbance, there will be impacts. We could see some coastal flooding, maybe some heavy rainfall, and maybe some freshwater flooding due to some um, intense rainfall in some areas. Another way we could um, visualize this is looking at the GFS, average precipitation rate, lighter greens, lighter rain, darker greens, heavier rain. And when you get into the yellows and reds, that's very heavy rain indeed. So when we go forward, in time, we can see where our system actually is. In fact, if we just use this, we can see that there could be some moisture that moves on shore over the Florida area. So keep that in mind for Friday afternoon into Friday evening. Uh, if you have any outdoor plans, just keep that in mind. This does not look to be a substantial system where we're going to see life-threatening impacts like we did with Alberta. But this is going to kind of detrimine maybe your you're going to say maybe disney world or if you're going to tallahassee just consider you might want to bring a rain jacket because there's going to be some showers and some gusty winds with that and then that kind of dissolves really quickly when we look at the european model we can see what that looks like here again some showery conditions friday afternoon into saturday morning again nothing too substantial but enough to where it might cancel your plans if those are outdoor sensitive or weather sensitive you might want to do those indoors instead. Now, when we look at our rainfall totals over Florida, again, not a big, huge, massive rainmaker because of higher heights and higher surface pressures. This is a more drier system, but nevertheless, you can get some intense rain bands that move over the same area. You might end up getting about an inch or so of rainfall, maybe an inch and a half right along the brim of the coast where you get the most moisture moving off the Atlantic. But either way, this does not look to be a big system by any means at all, but it will cause some impacts because it is a disturbance and we got to treat these very seriously because you just don't know what they're going to do next. As long as this remains a threat, I will be doing daily updates on this like I have been in the past with Alberto. Tomorrow looks good. Also on Saturday looks good for some uploading on this disturbance. Now, if this gets more significant enough, a live stream might be considered. I was not able to live stream last night. Some things did pop up pretty quickly because I do have family coming out on Sunday and Monday, and we're getting ready for that. Haven't seen my family from Florida in over 15, uh, 12 to 15 years or so, so it's quite exciting to see them uh, back again uh, since I haven't seen them in a while. But anyways, if you did enjoy today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. As always, I try to upload at least once daily. Unless there's a system that is a threat to land, then we might have to push out two videos a day like we did with Alberto because that was a pretty quickly changing situation. And if there is a system that is life-threatening, potentially catastrophic, we could provide uh, three videos a day or even a live stream. Make sure you don't miss an update by hitting the bell icon, subscribing to the channel, and also leaving a like uh, on this video as well as leaving a comment. As always, please be safe, folks, because the tropics do look active. And again, we will have to keep an eye on what goes down here in the northwestern portion of the Caribbean. We'll have to watch that as that could be a big threat, again, to the same areas as we discussed in la yesterday's video.